Hello, sewing people of the internet. So, last weekend, my wife and I were out indulging ourselves in uh, looking at maybe a, a new, not new, but a different home that we might want to buy. Uh, just driving around, checking out in the neighborhood, and as we were driving, I saw this sitting on the side of the road, obviously put out uh, on the road to either be hauled away with trash or for someone to take. And uh, as soon as I drove past it, I immediately like told my wife, like, hey, there's a sewing machine there. And we went and looked at what we were looking at, and on the way back, I pulled over to check it out uh, and threw it right in the truck when I saw what it was. So uh, we're going to talk about this machine. This is not a in-depth review of this machine. I've been aware of this machine's existence kind of on my periphery for a while, but I'm certainly not an expert in it. And I, as I sit here right now talking to you, I've never used it. So... Uh, one thing I want to do in this video is talk about the fact that somebody put this out on the side of the road to be thrown away, and whether it's actually a working, functional sewing machine. Right now, I don't know. And then we'll talk a little bit about the machine itself and what little bit I can tell you about it. If you're interested in this particular sewing machine, you should consider this a jumping off point, and uh, you can learn more about the machine from other videos or other sources online. So before I open up and reveal the machine, uh, I always think it's fun to go through these things when uh, I get a machine with a table or this stool has some storage in it and see what's in it. There's, I can, I've already been through it. There's not much of interest in it, but I'll go ahead and show you. So there's this drawer here and all that's in here is some bobbins and some spools of thread and a roll of dog poop bags. So I don't have a dog. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. Some, some thread and some needles. Uh, there was a little uh, hand sewing kit that my wife stole immediately. So, uh, And then inside this storage drawer, the top of the drawer just comes off. There is this little doohickey with more thread. Uh, I've talked about this in other videos. Most of this thread will probably get thrown away. I will probably use some of it for testing purposes. Um, but if there's something really cool, I'll probably keep it. But And then there is the attachment box for class 503 machines. There's your first clue. Uh, and this has the top hat cams and a bunch of other attachments. Um, I'm not going to go through it in any great detail. The usual assortment of things, and I'm glad that that's there. Uh, one thing I was hoping would be here is the... Uh, there's a straight stitch throat plate and a zigzag throat plate for this machine. And it looks like the zigzag throat plate is on the machine. No surprise, because I think most people would never bother to change it out unless they really know what they're doing. But the straight stitch throat plate is here in the box. That's cool. Looks pretty complete as far as I can tell. So far, this is all very encouraging and makes me wonder why the heck this thing was out by the road. Uh, there's some little pack of needles. This appears to be the manual. Yeah, there it is fold it open the wrong way. Manuals for these machines are available online. All of Singer's machines. Have, I'm trying to find the front here, but it's it's not in great shape. There's some pages torn and stuff. But in any event, the manuals here, that's nice. The manuals are available online. Um, all of Singer's machines, uh, you can get the manual online. Uh, and this is a manual for some other machine. So, don't really need that. And that's it. Uh, wasn't a whole lot in here. Uh, no, no bag of cash or anything. So, but let's get that out of the way. All right, let me bring you in a little bit closer, and we'll take a look at the machine itself. Before I open it up, I want to say this table is pretty nice. The sides are particle board. Uh, the top is wood. Obviously, it needs some refinishing here. Had a little bit of water sitting on it when I picked it up. It had rained very lightly that day, so I think that was just from that day. Otherwise, it seems to be in, in quite good condition. It's 
not real wobbly. Um, so sometimes these tables are kind of throwaways, but this is not bad. And also, uh, just when I open it, it, has this other part that opens on the back side there. So that's kind of nice or the far side. All right, here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for. So if I didn't give it away in titling this video, I uh, don't even know yet if that's gonna be the case. Uh, this is a Singer 503A, and this is one of the uh, models known as a Rocketeer. So recently I did a video on a Singer 401A, and this machine is the next series after that machine. It's also a slant needle machine, meaning that the needle comes down at an angle towards the user, and supposedly that allows it to have uh, increased visibility of the seam as you're sewing it. So, um, I've had a few slant needle machines at this point, and I don't really have anything good or bad to say about them. They seem to work fine. I, I haven't encountered any problems, and I haven't noticed that it's uh, a feature that I can't live without either. Um, I was reading through some comments on my 401A video and, and saw someone who made an observation that I think sounds logical that uh, it's potentially a, a weakness to have the needle coming in at a slant and might lead to more needle deflection than having it straight up and down. But I don't know that to be true. It does make sense to me though. But I haven't encountered any issues with this style of machine using it for the kinds of things I would use a machine like this for. So anyway, uh, you might have noticed I keep wiping dust away. This thing is filthy on the back side. It clearly looks like it's been sitting for a very, very long time. But otherwise, it seems to be in very good condition. Um, I've already looked underneath. It has these cool pop-up spool pins for using multiple spools of thread for either double needle stitching or I think some of the specialty stitches using the, the fashion discs or top hat cams may require two spools of thread. Uh, bobbin winder is up here and we'll go over more of the controls and stuff when we use it. The first thing I did when I found the machine on the side of the road and opened up and saw what it was is I gave it a couple turns and seems to turn fine. I mean, obviously probably stand to be lubricated and stuff, but uh, I'm not even going to lube it. I'm going to make sure the wiring doesn't look terrifying. I'm going to plug it in and I want to see if it sews. My suspicion, I have not done anything with this machine since I got it. My suspicion is I'm going to plug it in, thread it, and it's going to sew just fine. So let's see if that's the case. Before I sew with this thing, uh, one thing I want to point out, I did a video a while back about knee levers for operating a machine as opposed to a knee lever for lifting the presser foot, what I, what I usually refer to as a knee lift. This machine is in a table that's equipped with a knee lever and uh, my muscle memory will certainly be very confused if I try to use that to sew with it. One day maybe I'll try that just to see how bad it is. but. Uh, if you encounter a machine with a knee lever and you don't want to use that, 99 times out of 100, the knee lever just acts on a regular foot pedal, and that foot pedal is just in a bracket in the uh, table. If I can get this thing loose. There. So it's just a regular foot pedal that's in a bracket on the side and then when you depress or you push the knee lever it pushes on the, the button so I'm just going to use the foot pedal. I should crack myself I said 99 times out of 100 I have no idea everyone I've ever seen functions that way there's probably some that are different but if you encounter a machine with a knee lever and you don't want to use the knee lever look and see and there's probably a pedal there. I believe this machine was manufactured in 1961 or 1962. So this wiring, which all appears to be original, is quite old. So I'm just looking over it carefully to see if I see any breaks or anything. Uh, I am comfortable with what I'm seeing. If you don't feel comfortable examining 
wiring and evaluating the safety of using a machine like this, you should definitely have it checked out by a professional. Uh, I'm going to be careful, but I may be missing something, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Okay, the machine's plugged in. And I'm not smelling smoke. I'm going to tap it. Again, take any of my advice with a grain of salt, but these machines are made out of metal, which is a good uh, conductor of electricity. So uh, I usually like to use the back of my hand to touch it a few times to make sure that I'm, if I get shocked, at least it'll, I won't grab onto it. Uh, that's what I was told by an electrician friend of mine. Again, don't trust me on this. Uh, everything seems to be fine. I'm going to try turning on the light. I believe the machine is on. I think this is the machine that's just the light that you can turn on and off. So let's try the light. Well, what do you know? The light works. Uh, let's see, it's not threaded, so let's try running the machine. Well, what do you know? It runs perfectly. All right, let me thread it real quick and see if it actually sews. I have the manual right next to me, but I'm just going to guess how to wind a bobbin on this. If I get it wrong, I'll look it up. Does this have a clutch? Yep. Okay. Oh, clutch disengages nicely. That's not how that goes. Maybe. Let's see. Okay, well that worked perfectly. I'm gonna put a different color bobbin thread in so we can check the tension. There's a thread guide in the uh, door. Oh, no, that was great. Oh, it's the one from the top. There you go. So goes to there. And then there. Is that the Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have figured that one out on my own. Well, I guess I probably would have eventually been. Yeah, this is all very familiar from other machines with the exception of this arrangement here, a little bit weird. I'm often asked about needle selection, and I often say that I'm terrible about choosing a different needle or even remembering that it's a good idea to change needles. And to further illustrate that point, I'm just going to leave the needle that's in here in the machine see how it does. I'm gonna get my reading glasses to do it though. Alright. That took a little bit of doing. Press your foot's loose. I'm gonna tighten that up. Okay. Okay, picked up the thread right away. And then I pulled it right back out. Okay, and now work is calling, so I've got to pause for a second, and we'll have to be in suspense until I come back. Okay, uh, crisis handled. Now let's see if this thing sews.
Tension's a little bit high on the top. It's a little better. Don't know if I have the zigzag cam in here. I think so. So, let's try that. Let's see? Before I go any further into talking about this machine, come on, that thing sews fantastically. I, you know, I haven't touched all the features of this machine and maybe there's something that doesn't work that was important to the person that used to own this machine. I doubt it. This is probably grandma's machine and somehow it ended up in the possession of the people at you know the house where I found it and they just didn't want it. Cool, I, I get it, most people don't do this. But I mean, low ball, like as it sits right now, filthy dirty, with them not knowing what it was, if they put it on Marketplace or Craigslist or something, I would have given them 25 bucks for it, maybe 50 bucks. Like, if I found this in a thrift store in this condition, I probably would have paid 50 bucks for it, maybe more. It's, you know, you look online, you see people asking $300 for these machines. I don't know if that's a fair price for these or not, but this is, by everything I've seen so far, this is an excellent example of a vintage domestic sewing machine that is a great way for someone who is interested in the kind of sewing that I like to do to get started. Uh, or for somebody who does like very general sewing, altering clothing, making clothing, you know, just kind of typical sewing stuff. There you go, that's what you need, a machine like this. Uh, it's sad. To me, this should be as egregious as someone saying, hey, I've got grandma's 68 Camaro in the garage. It runs perfectly, but I don't really want it. And just putting it out by the road with a free sign on it. Like, if, if anybody ever sees that, I'll take the 68 Camaro. But, I mean, that's, that's really the kind of thing we're talking about here. This is a classic machine that works great, that you can still use today that's probably better than most things that you can buy, you know, most comparable things today. I don't understand it, but anyway, here it is, works perfectly. I, again, you saw it, I didn't oil it, I didn't clean it, I didn't do anything to it. It's still got a half inch of dust on the back. Works great. All right, let's look at some of the details of the machine at least. It's really sad. Before I finish taking this apart or taking this cover off, the uh, spool pin from the top can also be used from this position. Apparently, I thought something was missing here, but apparently that's where that goes. It's missing a little clip here for this cover. I imagine that's something I can replace somehow. So the body of the machine is made out of aluminum. This front cover is plastic, I think. Uh, and this top cover, let's see, that's probably aluminum. And then it might be cast aluminum as well. I don't actually, yeah, I've never put one of these cams in before. I was going to say I don't know how to take it off, but I guess that's how you take it off. Uh, yeah, okay, easy. So we'll take a look inside. Uh, you've got your bobbin winder tire here that looks pretty worn. Probably could stand to replace that. I think that's a pretty easy part to come by. Uh, this is the wiring for the light. That looks nice and intact. 
I've un unplugged the machine, by the way. This is, uh, I think, sorry, my finger's in the way. This gear is kind of like the one on a Singer 201. It's a, a sort of plastic material, but a uh, very, very tough material. That looks to be in excellent condition. Other than that gear, I don't think there's any nylon gears in this machine. I think it's all metal. So all metal in the same sense that a 201 is all metal. It has that one plastic-like gear. So this is the pressure adjustment for the presser foot. Otherwise, all pretty standard looking stuff. Let's take a look under the skirt. So you can see we've got gear driven shaft over here, all gear driven. All metal, looks great. It's nice and clean under here considering how dirty the machine is uh, just from dust from sitting. But uh, yeah, this is a solid, solid machine. So the motor is mounted internally on these machines. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the specs. No. So I'm not sure how powerful the motor is, but it seems you know completely adequate, if not uh, good and then you can kind of get a view here of the light i think that's yeah that's a glass uh, lens or diffuser or whatever a little rotary switch here i'll put that cover back on in a second so controls of the machine are pretty simple uh down here this is the one that's slightly different from some machines that i've used uh, this is to raise the throat plate for darning or free motion quilting. So by moving this lever to the central position, I'll, I'll move it and show you what it does. It raises the uh, throat plate up. And that way, as the feed dogs move, they're too low to interact with the fabric. So you can move the fabric however you like without the feed dogs moving the fabric for you. If you take the lever all the way over, it fully releases it so you can remove it and then you could put that straight stitch plate in. The reason for the straight stitch plate is these zigzag plates have a wider hole for the needle to pass through and if you're doing straight stitching on very lightweight fabric it can be beneficial to have a straight stitch plate that just has a round hole. So it's just big enough for the needle to pass through and it prevents the fabric from being pulled down into the opening and, and causing puckering and stuff. So. But for most people, most of the time, you probably just leave the zigzag plate in. Uh, what you don't want to do is try to zigzag stitch or any other decorative stitch with the straight stitch foot in because that will uh, definitely cause a problem. So moving up, you have your pretty typical stitch length and reverse lever. It has a screw action so you can dial in where you want it to be and kind of lock it in. Uh, it's marked for fine stitch length in this section here and by by using the screw action to put the stopper in place your reverse stitch length should be the same as your forward stitch length up here we have the stitch width control for zigzag stitching and your needle position so let's see we're in center now to uh, actuate this you have to push it in and up or down so this is left right and center and i pointed out a minute ago this is the uh, presser foot pressure control and then for your standard sewing, that's pretty much it. Oh, sorry, I forgot the tensioner. That's pretty much it for the controls. I'm not going to talk a lot about the uh, top hat cam, the fashion disc thing, because I just don't know anything about it. This is not an area of sewing that I engage in much. 
uh, that's where those go. And uh, I showed you the box earlier, but there's several different pattern cams that you can use for different patterns. And that's illustrated on the inside top cover. So the bobbin is a top loading class 66 bobbin. Um, not much more to say about that. There is a thread cutting notch on the back of the presser foot arm for cutting the thread when you finish sewing. A lot of my machines, especially my industrial machines, don't have that, so I forget to use that feature a lot, but then when I remember, it's really handy. Okay, so now I've checked the condition of the machine and confirmed that it functions. I gotta do something about all this dust and dirt on it, so let me clean this thing up before we close this video up. To start with, I'm just gonna use a damp microfiber rag, just damp it with a very little bit of water. I found the manual on Ismax, uh, it's certainly available on Singer's website too, it just uh, was easier for me to go back to Ismax because I had done some research there on this machine anyway. So I'm just going to use that manual rather than destroy the paper when I have and find all the oiling points, see if there's any under the machine, yeah. Alright, so I need grease for those and then oil here. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a good oiling since who knows when it's ever been oiled. So now that it's cleaned up a little bit, it, I literally just wiped it with a damp rag. Uh, I didn't use any cleaning products or anything on it. Uh, I want to give you a good look at the condition of this machine, which is kind of remarkably good to me, but it's not perfect. Uh, so the little rubber feet here, which I believe are there in case you were using it on the tabletop instead of inserted into the table. Those are all there and seem to be in very good shape. This machine's probably been in this table its entire life. There are some chips in the paint. I'm going to get it dirty again with my grubby hands from oiling it, but uh, there are some chips in the paint, but overall it's not too bad on the bed. Let's take a look at the rest of the machine. Again, there's some I don't even know if you can see it. There's you know, little chips here and there. Some imperfections. There's some some scratches. The hand wheel is probably the worst part. It's quite chipped. But overall, it's in pretty reasonable shape. I mean, it cleaned up quite nicely. Uh, I said that if I found this as it was in a thrift store, I probably would have given them 50 bucks for it or something. If I were looking for this machine, I, you know, I have so many sewing machines, I'm not really shopping for sewing machines anymore, but if I were looking for this, if I saw it like this, I'd probably pay $100 for it, uh, especially knowing that it works as well as it does. It's definitely a beautiful machine. Uh, the Rocketeers are they're called the Rocketeers because of this space age futuristic design they have. Uh, mechanically, I think they're the same as the 401 and 400 series machines. But uh, they're beautiful, beautiful machines, and uh, this one seems to work really, really well, so I think I got a bargain. I have to admit, I'm a little bit tempted because it has so many chips and stuff in the paint, and because it was put out to trash. I could basically do whatever I want with this machine guilt-free. I'm halfway tempted to paint it some crazy color, but uh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should do that. Just give you a look at the back now that it's all cleaned up. I think I showed this wrong earlier, just wanted to point this out because I think it's kind of cool. 
I think just for storage of the machine, or I guess if you're using these other two spool pins and didn't want to have this on the top, this actually goes in like that. So, so you can put the machine away or transport it without fear of breaking that pin off at least. So it's a pretty cool design feature. Well, the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure, and this is definitely way more treasure than trash to me. It really honestly saddens me a little bit that somebody put this out uh, on the road to be thrown away, uh, or I guess they put it on the side of the road so somebody like me would come pick it up, but if I didn't, it would have been going in the trash. Um, this is a beautiful machine. I don't yet know what my plans are for it. Uh, I just grabbed it to save it. Um, someone on Instagram, when I posted on Instagram about this, mentioned that I would probably get it cleaned up and give it away to someone, and that's a possibility, but I'm not sure right now. I'm going to keep this one. So, um, anyway, that's uh, just kind of a quick overview on the Singer 503A, but more importantly, a story about the fact that people throw away perfectly good things. And I only know about a few things in life. Sewing machines is one of them. I'm sure that there are fantastic things being thrown away uh, in other categories and maybe we should all try not to do that especially with the internet now like this person could have easily found somebody who wanted this machine for free and given it to them um, like me for example so uh, I am thinking about doing something though one thing I like to do when somebody gives me a sewing machine is I like to make something with that machine and then give that to them as a gift uh, kind of a thank you gift thinking about making a little pouch or something with this machine and just going back out to that house and knocking on the door and giving it to them. I don't know. I might get shot, but it might be a fun thing to do. So we'll see. I doubt if I'll put that in a video showing up with a camera rolling is probably not cool, but I'll try to update somewhere if I do that. But anyway, Singer 503 Rocketeer, beautiful machine. Uh, the I think there's two machines that are known as the Rocketeer. The 501 or 500, I forget. I think it's 501 and the 503. There may be other variants that I'm not aware of. I, again, I'm not an expert on any sewing machines, much less the sewing machines that I just got. So um, the other one that I know of, though, I think it's the 501, does not require a zigzag cam to do zigzag. It can do zigzag. All the Well, a lot of the stitches are in an internalized cam stack and then you can also use additional uh, fashion discs for additional stitches but the important point for someone like me who basically uses straight and zigzag and that's it uh, the 501 will do zigzag without having to put a particular cam in if this cam gets lost then this machine won't do zigzag anymore so if you have a machine like this make sure you hang on to that cam but uh, other than that, pretty awesome machine. I'm, uh, I'm glad to have it, and I'm looking forward to using it more. And I'll have to figure out how that goes. Oh, here. Uh, looking forward to using it more, and I'm really glad I was driving around on that particular street that day. If you're driving around and see a little desk out by the side of the road waiting for the trash man, take a closer look. I hope you got something out of this video. If you have questions or comments, post them in the comment section below. If you like this video, clicking like is a great way to help me out. You can also buy merchandise from uh, the links below. Some are affiliate links that helps me out and I have some limited merchandise that you can buy from me. You can also follow me on Instagram and I have a second channel where I do fishing and camping and all kinds of other stuff. So if you like that kind of stuff, you might want to check it out. Links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.